All right. Uh, let's do this. Oh, who put this exhaust in my way here? <laughs> pain in the butt, I know. Ah. Alright guys, so that's what we've done in the previous episode on the 1960 40R4 behind me on the Rusty Beauties channel. But as you can see, we have lots of other components installed in the engine bay and I'm going to show you this in this episode. So without further ado, let's get crack a All right, so I mounted the rear end of the transmission and I even installed this uh, anti-rattle balancer, whatever that heavy thing is. We discussed it in one of the previous episodes and I was gonna install the speedometer cable and then I remember that this car, when I test drove it, the speedometer was going like, <laughs> it was bouncing back and forth. And when I mentioned that in one of my previous videos, many people suggested that this is the cable uh, which is uh, probably rusted inside. And the cable is right here now, because it's a, it's a long cable. And we're gonna have to take this uh, angle drive out too and clean it. So let's see if we can restore a little bit this cable because we don't have a new one. This is the, the wiring for the overdrive. We're gonna make new wiring or we'll see if we can use anything of this. That actually spins pretty well. Can it be the drive, the angle drive? Let me try something. That spins pretty well, as long as it's inside the speedometer, maybe it came out. Oh, it's counterclockwise, Aline. Initially I tried clockwise and it didn't work, but it's counterclockwise, so... But you see it's not bouncing at all. Okay, so my drill goes to 85 miles per hour. <laughs> Can't go more than that. But look at that, it's... Pretty consistent, doesn't bounce at all. Well, we just put a lot of mileage on the car. Can we turn it back? Apparently we can't turn it back. Unfortunately, we can't sell it as a low mileage car. <laughs> this means that the cable is okay and the speedometer is okay. I also checked the gear. I was able to put my finger inside and <laughs> check if the gear on the A-type overdrive <laughs> inside is damaged and it's not, at least as, as far as I can feel with my finger. So my only suspicion is the angle drive. So let's look at that. Well, I cleaned the angle drive and I installed it on the cable. So let's try the same thing now, but through the angle drive. So it looks pretty good. It bounces a little, but I think that's my drill. 
Well, I don't know. Let's hope that whatever it is, it's gone, because we obviously don't have problem with the angle drive, the cable, or the speedometer. I don't think we have a problem with that gear, so I hope it was like loose somewhere. All right, so I'm under the car here to install the slave cylinder, the clutch slave, and this plate here, which I did install, but I noticed here on the transmission that we already have oil collecting on the brake plate of the overdrive. Remember this leak that I wasn't sure if it was gonna be fixed by just tightening the bolts? Looks like it wasn't. That's the only leak that we couldn't fix. But anyways, there's no drips on the floor yet. So hopefully it's just very, very, very slow leak. I know for a fact that the other ones that we worked on are fixed but we will see. So even here a little bit on the other side, there's no way to fix those without taking the overdrive apart. Anyways, we will see when we start the engine and when we test drive it, if it is going to start leaking more or it's just going to be wet like this. Hi, Rusty. <laughs> All right, it's the next day and today we're gonna be working on the head. Last night I was waiting for the paint to dry so I couldn't work on it, but I cleaned up this shaft and I cleaned up the steering rack a little bit because as you know, we need to change the tie rod ends here, but we're gonna put it to the side for now and we're gonna assemble the head and install it in the engine bay so we can complete our engine rebuild. All right, so here's our head. Let's unmask it. So first of all, let's bring our springs and stuff here. So what I like to do is I arrange my springs in order so I don't mess them up because they're different here for the intake and for the exhaust. So the exhaust has three springs, the intake has two springs. Also, the exhaust has a collar at the bottom. Like this is, for example, a collar for the exhaust. And of course, this way I make sure that I have everything before I start working. So this is an exhaust collar. There you go. So these little springs are only for the exhaust valves. All right, so this is everything arranged here. So as you can see, the exhaust has three springs, has a bottom collar and a top collar. It has one of these spacers and the two keepers. The intake only has two springs. It has only the top collar and the bottom washer here and the keepers. So first, fourth, fifth and eighth are exhaust and the valves are arranged in the same way. So and let's start assembling them. So I'm gonna use my special tool here that I made myself. I'm not gonna explain again what it is. It's obvious. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for the first one. Take the valve and wipe it just in case. Make sure that there's nothing on it. A little bit of assembly lube. So very little, so it doesn't run dry. So I'm gonna put the valve in the valve guide. So these spacers go with this side up. This side that looks like a sun is for whatever reason going down. So that's how they go. Then this is exhaust. So we have a bottom collar that supports the inner spring. Then we have the bigger spring. And then the biggest, big, bigger, biggest. Then we have the top collar and we have the two keepers. We'll go like this. That's 
better. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is in. And for the intake, it's the same. Again, position this properly. No bottom collar, just the two springs, the top collar, and the valve. Put the keepers here to be easy to grab. Clean the valve. Assembly lube. And that's it. So that's how we have to go through all of them. I forgot that I zoomed you in so much, so you missed it, but you didn't miss anything, you know what I mean? It's the same process. We are almost done here. All right, so we have all the springs installed, all the valves. Now, let's figure out our pedestals here. Well, I need to clean this, okay. I haven't cleaned this yet. All right, now we can install the, the studs for the rocker shaft but we're not going to install the, the rocker shaft yet because it's going to be in our way for the head studs. It covers them. So you know how in um, 500 miles after rebuilding the engine you have to retorque the head. Well, you have to remove the rocker shaft to do that. I'm just snagging them. I didn't tell you, but they have coarse threads and fine threads and the coarse threads go into the head. The fine thread is where the nut goes after the shaft. And there's also these two other studs here for the valve cover. Just gonna put them on as well. Anyways, I think that's it. Now we are ready to install it on the engine. Exciting! All right, so here, the usual dilemma, which side of the gasket goes up and whether to put gasket maker or not. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about. You see here, the gasket has one folded side and one pretty smooth side. So there are different opinions here. Some people say that the smooth side needs to be up. Some people say that the folded side needs to be up. And some people say that if there was a difference, uh, there was going to be a mark somewhere. Well, I'm with the last group. If there was a difference, there was going to be a mark. Usually what I do is I put the smooth side towards the block and this side towards the head. I don't know why. I have absolutely no idea. Also, I used to put gasket maker everywhere because my where I was coming from was, well, it won't hurt. Even if it doesn't help, it's not going to hurt. But uh, I've been told that it actually might hurt on copper gaskets, so I don't know. Anyways, that's how we're going to put it. Without gasket maker. Okay. Anything else? Wow, I'm forgetting something, guys. Tuppets. We only have the two tuppets in the first cylinder. If I don't put them now, I won't have a chance to put them later. <laughs> so, tuppets. Wow, 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 wow. Don't forget that, Elin.
Okay, we have two, four, six, eight tuppets there. Perfect. Now we can put the head. Wow, that was going to be a fun experience if I figured that out later. Huh? Thanks for reminding me, guys. Okay, that's the only problem now. This is so heavy. Good. It's in. All right. Okay. And now we can put the washers. And these are just washers. They're not lock washers. And then the nuts. Now I don't remember what the torque here was, but I believe it was somewhere around 100. These are like big studs. So I'm gonna go check that, and then we're gonna torque them. All right, so the torque is 100 to 105 foot-pounds. That's, I remember correctly. And now I just realized why somebody was yelling when I was putting those studs here. I heard somebody yelling on the screen, but didn't pay attention. Thanks for reminding me. You can't put these studs here because your socket is not gonna fit. So the two studs for the cover yeah. come after you torque the head. <laughs> okay, so how we're gonna tighten them? We're gonna start from the center, one of the two, and then we're gonna go in circles. So we're gonna tighten these two, then these two, then these two, then these two, and then these two. So we go from the center out. That's the pattern. And since the torque is 110, I'm gonna go in three goals. I'm gonna go first to 60 maybe, then maybe 85 and then 105 or something like this. There you go. We just want it to go down smoothly and even. Let's go to 85, let's say. And the final, 105. I'm going to put it at 103. I guess that's why they give you a little bit of a range. So if your torque wrench is not set properly, because mine is cheap torque wrench, so if it has any deviations, from the truth, at least if you're a little bit plus or minus, you're still in the range, right? Okay, so now we can put this. Then we can install our new push rods. And last but not least, the rocker shaft. So now the pedestals might be not in the right location because we moved them around, so we have to rearrange them. Good. Now, we're gonna loosen all these adjust adjuster screws all the way, and now we can bring it down. We can put them like this. And now we can take a look from here to make sure that all the rockers fall on top of the valves, not somewhere else, right? So you see, some of them are a little bit to the side, but it's not a big deal, as long as the whole stem of the valve is under the face of the rocker. So you, let's see how they move. Some of them, even though we, are, we loosen them, some of them are already tight. 
like this one is tight and number two is tight let's make one full turn and make sure that everything rotates and everything moves properly so this one is going down and this one is down now this goes down and this goes down like I'm not putting any pressure right now if I feel any pressure I'm gonna stop because for example for whatever reason if uh, if the push roads are too long we might end up damaging something you know bending them so as long as everything rotates without too much pressure then we're good Okay, I think we made more than one revolution here. So in this case, let's adjust them. Let's keep turning now and wait for the first cylinder here for the exhaust to go down, then the intake to go down. And when the intake closes, we're gonna go to top dead center and we'll know that this is our uh, top dead center on the power stroke on this cylinder. And that's where we can adjust the valves. So, there you go, now the exhaust goes down, now the exhaust closes, the intake opens, takes fuel, now it's closing, and now our power stroke starts, so now we're gonna watch the mark on the pulley in the front, when the mark comes up, this means this is our top dead center of the first cylinder, and this is where we have to adjust our valves to have 10 tau of a lash here. So we're gonna put the 10 tau leaf here and we're gonna tighten this adjuster screw until it mo the leaf moves pretty snug and then we're gonna tighten the nut. Now, while tightening the nut, okay, this is ridiculous. So this nut here is probably 12 millimeters. So for whatever reason, they give you 12 millimeter nut here. Okay, make sure that this is still nice and snug here, which it's not, now it's looser. So now I have to, ugh. And then same with this one. Now there are different techniques here. You can go with the rule of nine for a four cylinder engine and for with the rule of 13 for a six cylinder engine. But I'm not gonna explain them here. I might put a link to a video here if you are curious to know more about the rule of nine and the rule of 13. I'm just gonna use the top dead center of each cylinder and adjust the valves there at the top dead center of the power stroke. Okay. okay. So that was number one. So now if we turn the crankshaft at 180 degrees, we can adjust that's going to be the top dead center of number three because that's the firing order, right? One, three, four, two. And to do that, I'm just going to watch this bolt now when it comes up. That's my top dead center of number three. So now in this position, we can adjust number three. Okay, so now we can go another 180 and adjust number four. Okay. 
Okay. And another 180. And we can adjust number two. Okay, all right, so I started dressing up the engine a little bit. So I put the fuel line, I put the spark plugs so nothing goes inside the cylinders. This pipe here, we're not gonna put, we're gonna plug it here. This car didn't have uh, heat and the owner is okay with that. And now on the other side, okay, I'm just gonna demonstrate how it goes but I'm gonna take them out after because this now needs to be baked. So I might do that in the kitchen oven. Don't tell my girlfriend because we, uh, we painted this with ceramic paint and now it's dry. It's more than two weeks ago. It says that it needs to dry for two weeks. Uh, so now there's a special procedure. Actually, let me read it to you. Bake at 250 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes, cool for 30 minutes, bake at 400 degrees for 30 minutes, then cool for 30 minutes, and then bake at 600 degrees for 30 minutes and cool for 30 minutes. Do not exceed the heat tolerance of the least heat tolerant part. So that's gonna take a total of three hours. So I don't have time to do that today. But tomorrow, once my girlfriend goes to work, I'm gonna do it, don't tell her. But that's how it goes. Then the intake goes like this. Right there. Of course, this needs to be painted too. And then you have these footballs that bridge them and tighten them here. But on the long studs, the two long studs, you have these bridges. These are a little bit longer and they bridge again between the intake and the exhaust manifolds and that's how it goes so anyways we're not going to install these now i forgot that i have to bake this <laughs> all right so it's the next day and yesterday i've been doing some work here i cleaned up all the linkage the fuel lines even the carbs themselves i just cleaned them on the outside inside if you can see here the air pump is pretty dirty, but we're gonna clean them inside after I start the car initially because I don't wanna mess up with the carbs and then having troubles for the initial start because once we assemble this baby and we start the engine because of the new camshaft and the new tappets, we're gonna have to run it for 30 minutes to break it in once it starts. So I don't wanna have carburetor issues in the meantime. I know that the engine run with the carbs set up as they were, so I'm gonna leave them as they are now. And once we are done with the break-in process, I'm gonna take them apart as they are on the car and I'm gonna clean them up and we will see what we can do about them. So anyways, the other one is still here. I just used carb clean on the outside with a brush and they cleaned up pretty well. The exhaust manifold is cooking right now. Don't tell my girlfriend. <laughs> it's in its second stage. Now it is in the oven at uh, 400 degrees. And then there's another stage at 600, which I don't know if my oven goes that far. And I know that the parchment paper only works till 400. So probably I'm gonna have to use tin foil or something, but anyways. So I'm gonna keep working here. I'm not gonna show you everything. I'm just gonna keep dressing up the engine bay and everything I can. And uh, we're gonna go from there. All right, so I just assembled the intake with the carbs. Just assembled all the linkage as well, but I figured we have a problem and I'll show you what I think the problem is. So first of all, I took it apart again to verify whether the, the spring on the carbs here is solid enough to return the throttle which it does pretty well. Then this uh, linkage here goes on the bottom of the manifold like this. 
and you see the, sh the boat has a shoulder here that this lever rides on so the boat doesn't compress the lever against the manifold here of course because that's going to block the movement the thing still moves freely here right absolutely no problem the problem becomes though when I hook this up like this and now you see it doesn't return something is stopping it like you have to literally push it back you have to push on the lever on the outside so it can come back and that explains also why there was a spring here there was a aftermarket spring that somebody installed right here I actually still have it to pull the throttle back but <laughs> that's not the solution I guess that's how you're gonna see better I think it is this angle why do we need so, so much angle I think this needs to be on this side so I, I I'll try that I tried manuals and stuff I couldn't find anything maybe there is a picture somewhere but I'm not patient enough so I'm just gonna try on the other side well that's better All right, so here, <laughs> I don't remember if this was like this, come on, or like this. I have another mystery engine under the bench, and on that engine, it is like that, so I don't need to go and check my old videos or menus and stuff like that. Here I wanted to mention something which is worth mentioning the boats these two boats are with coarse threads that go inside the pump these though are with the fine thread so looks like somebody messed it up already here because look this boat goes three eighths of an inch if not even half inch in before the threads start grabbing so what i'm gonna do for here is i'm gonna put a nut in the back just for this one this other one threads from the very beginning so it's good but this is aluminum body so or aluminium whatever you want to call it so you have to be careful with the torque all right so let me grab the thermostat install a gasket here so we have a 180 Fahrenheit thermostat which goes like this if you remember on this car there was no thermostat there was a plate there but the actual thermostat was removed so I guess they had issues with overheating before same here on this gasket I'm just gonna hold it there so it's easier to go around okay also here a very important part it's pretty self-explanatory but it's worth mentioning it the thermostat goes before the gasket because there is a groove there for the thermostat to go in and then the gasket otherwise 
the thermostat won't fit through the gasket. And here it's just the ring that seals, but again, I'm gonna put gasket maker everywhere. So here how we're gonna do it is we're gonna put the lock washer on the other side, like this. I just wanna space my little clamp here, my little holder, a little bit out because my hole is too close to the curve, so that's how we're gonna do it. Problem is now my bolt is not long enough to grab, to put a nut there. So I need to find a longer bolt. So like we said, don't overdo it with the torque here. Oh, that's more than enough. This one, since it has a nut, is not so critical. But yeah, I think that's good. All right, so the exhaust manifold is well done. <laughs> Even cooled down already. Well, it's still warm, but it's not that hot. So we baked it and we'll see if this time it's gonna work. I've never done that before. I always bake them on the car and they last pretty well, but sometimes you can see them starting to get dark as soon as you start the car. So I don't know, we'll see. Uh, just wanted to mention a few things here with these studs you have three lengths. So these four are the medium ones, these two are the longest, and these two are the shortest ones. And the longest ones are there because only in this location we have this long bridge that goes to uh, hold both manifolds at the same time. On these four we have short ones, these are known as footballs. Also very important, these two dowels here, they are there to locate the intake manifold, which we're going to install now. So you see, it needs to fit on the dowels. Come on. There you go. Okay. And now the footballs are going to pull it in. So that's how the footballs go. I didn't paint it. This manifold is it's aluminum, so it's not gonna rust. I think it polished nicely, so it doesn't need painting. So the the longer footballs that don't look like footballs anymore go there underneath. I know you can't see it there, but me neither, don't worry. <laughs> so these you have to hold them because they can spin around, you see? So you have to make sure that when you start actually tightening them towards the manifolds, they stay, they have little dots on the manifolds that they fall into. So once they are there, they will stay. I hate when my sockets are dirty inside and they make a mess of my newly cleaned hardware. Okay, so I believe everything here on this side is assembled. I put even the fuel line, I connected the linkage underneath. I put the spring here where it, where it originally goes because I think there was no spring there. There were two springs on the linkage. I don't remember where the one on this side was. I think it was from here to the carburetor somewhere. I don't remember. The one on this side I know for a fact was from this uh, link here to somewhere on the generator I think or maybe somewhere on the body I don't know but it was pulling this way but with just one spring where where it originally goes there's a tap down there I don't know like it's dark I know you can't see it but with just that look it's coming back naturally absolutely no problem so anyways, I think on this side, everything is installed. We're not gonna do the cleaners yet because we're gonna need to adjust the carbs at some point. We need to hook up the alternator, but we need to modify stuff here for that. And I'm gonna do that after the initial start of the engine. So for the initial start, we're gonna go with the battery charger on the battery. Since we're not running the heater 
core inside. I'm just gonna cap this and the same on the other side. I'm gonna cap this as well. And uh, on this side, the distributor we're still not gonna install because we're gonna need to prime the oil system. I can install the ignition coil. We have a new one. I can install the oil filter. Now I can remove this clamp from here. Hopefully the hose is not kinked now. No, just opened properly. Good. All right. Well, fuel started coming right away. Interesting. Where is the air going? That's interesting, isn't it? Anyway, so there's not much to be done here still in the engine bay, uh, except of course the radiator and everything. But the thing is, I want to torque this boat because somebody in the comments was asking me why didn't I torque it. Normally, I, I would leave it until the engine is in the car and this is the moment when I torque it. I, I just put the car in fourth gear and pull the e-brake as well and then I torque this boat. The thing is though, uh, right now, I, like I said before, my drive shaft is not hooked up and I'm not gonna hook it up yet because it's coming out actually, because I need to service the differential. I need to change the front seal on it. So I'm gonna wait with that for a while. And in this case, in this case, I need to figure out a different way to torque the engine if I want to install the radiator, but I'm gonna wait for now. You know what I can do? I can put this uh, cross member here. That's what I can do here. I'm trying to assemble as many things in the engine bay as possible. And uh, I actually have to put an end to this video at some point. I don't even know where I stand with, with beginnings and endings. <laughs> Well, actually, you know what? I think that's going to be enough for this video. I have, I'm so far behind with my editing on videos that I have lots of material that needs to be edited and put in videos. So normally I have a pretty good idea when I'm starting a video and when I'm finishing a video while I'm filming. But now I just got lost. I don't know how much footage is going to go into my first video, then in the second, then in the third. You know what I mean? So I'm just going to put an ending to this one here. Hopefully I'm going to be able to use it. If this particular moment falls into to the middle of a video, then, well, I'm just not going to use it, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, I'm rambling here, so uh, let's put an end to this video. So thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting, for subscribing, for sharing, for supporting the channel and all the good things that you do for me, guys. I really appreciate them. So. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.